would put on these markets and they were successful, but they were for a day, flash in the pan. And so there was this constant conversation from shoppers and makers and people saying, can you do it more? I held off on retail for years and years and years. I knew to sell the kind of things we sell, which are handmade vintage, one of a kind items, I had to have a space that felt like us. And Dallas is shiny and pretty and expensive. And we're selling affordable stuff. My name is Brittany Cobb, and I'm the founder of Flea Style here in Dallas. I'm born and raised in Orange County, California. My mom was always a stay-at-home mom, but had a lot of side hustle and passion in her. She would put on little boutiques, holiday markets, and always had a stall at an antique mall. I always was her wig woman. I was helping her navigate when we used to have to use old maps and go, mom, make a left here for this estate sale. But I learned so much and just kind of got the bug for the thrill of the hunt. So from as young as I can remember, I wanted to be a journalist. And I had one person I knew that went to SMU and really liked it. So on a whim, I applied. I'm the first person to leave the nest of my entire extended family. I have a giant California family and I wanted to do something different, shocker. My first job out of school was at the Dallas Morning News. I was a lifestyle writer. I wrote for the fashion department and the home department. Four years into my career, I moved to New York. So when I was living in New York, I was still writing a ton for Dallas Publications. I got an email saying, hey, we're hiring a Texas editor for Daily Candy. Would you be interested? So I took the job, moved back to Dallas. I was out meeting makers, collectors, crafters. I would write a story and they would have maybe $10,000 in sales the next day. They would write to me and say, how can I get that magic again? And so I kept thinking in the back of my mind, how can I support these people? I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take all of these people and put them under one roof for a holiday market, just like my mom did. The week before my first holiday market, I called it the Dallas Flea, um, I got laid off. I was without a job and so I worked my tail off. And a thousand people showed up, excited to shop this unique new concept in Dallas that no one here had really seen before. And I kind of just cracked the code. And the next thing I knew, I was putting one on in March and then June. I had moved back from New York and I was doing my apartment for the first time and friends would say, oh my gosh, your living room, it's so unique and different. And so then they started saying, would you do this for me if I paid you? And I was like, yeah, I need some money, I'd love to. I started getting bigger projects and bigger projects. And then one day I got a call, Jerry Jones was building a lodge in Missouri and needed a decorator. It took over my life, it was giant. And so I still did my flea market as I could, but it went from four times a year to two times a year to one time a year. And I would be thinking of those makers that were emailing me and saying, when's the next show? And they were depending on that income and I wasn't doing it anymore. And I had a real internal struggle with it. And so I made a decision that winter, I had my son in January, that I was going to complete all of my design projects. But when I was done with that last job, I was gonna go back to the flea. I went from a little dark hallway at Southside on Lamar to renting a giant 35,000 square foot warehouse. I tripled my vendor count. The line went around and around and around. And I knew I had hit the nail on the head that people were wanting this. They wanted it back, bigger than ever. And I was all in. I wanted a name that could translate beyond Dallas and flea style just felt right. I went full force. We went to 100,000 square feet at Fair Park. Then we put shows in Houston. At the end of the day, retail was the thing that we were being asked about the most. So as much as retail scared me like crazy, I knew I had to enter brick and mortar. Getting the space we're in today was just meant to be. It was an old printing facility. And so I walked in, it smelled like my journalism career. And it was just home. Our tables are their old work tables. Their drying, hanging racks are clothing racks. We literally took everything of theirs and reused it and honored it, including their sign that hangs above our kitchen. So our Deep Elm store has about 85 vendors inside. And you're not gonna see stalls like an antique mall or a flea market. We organically style them throughout. We have a very large studio space, which is really risky in retail, but I believed in it. And it has been a home run for us. I needed something that got people in here, no matter if it was rainy, if it was a Monday. So our makers will come in, bring their supplies, and we'll kind of collaborate on a class that really speaks to flea style in our shopper. So a couple years ago, I knew I needed to start a podcast. That journalism bug like really got me again. And so we launched Fridays with Flea Style. And for an hour's time, I tell the story of a creative person that has a really inspiring path. 
Flea Style is growing. We are opening in Frisco this fall in a 6,200 square foot space that will encompass our retail store, our studio, and our restaurant called Heirloom Hall. If you remember the old antique mall always had the tea room in the back? It's a real play on that. The stress level's high. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot, but it fuels me. It's what gets me excited and out of bed every morning. Two days a month, I clear my schedule and I just go hunt. And it just lets me clear my mind and it keeps me humble to my roots at Flea Style. But people love to be able to shop those things that I'm finding. And for me, it's just such a release. It's such a full circle moment to my childhood and what got this whole thing started. Flea Style is changing the lives of a lot of these makers in our store. We've had people that have been able to quit their job and make this their full-time thing. What I hope for Flea Style 5, 10, 15 years down the road is that we've created a real brand built on the maker community. And I really see us having more retail stores. I see us having a bigger footprint in digital through our podcast, through our e-commerce. I just see us growing everything we're doing and just doing it bigger and better. Yeah.